first step in making the new top uh, slide clamp. Um, I cut the first piece by hand uh, and then realised I bought a bandsaw. Um, I just, because I've not had one for so long, I just forgot I got the damn thing. Made life a lot easier though. Um, so now we've got to square those up on the, the mill and we can start putting holes in and stuff. Right, so we've got the, uh, the mount for the laid top slide squared up. Not exactly, but just uh, roughly squared so that we can take a measurement and decide uh, where we need to come down to. The chip guards seem to work okay. Um, obviously, when this comes further out, and if you're low, you can, you know, you need to be able to remove this. But, but that works because it works. Um, it comes in and out with the vice. Uh, better for the smaller stuff. Um, and that I just use a magnet to. Um, I can position that wherever I like. A couple of clamps. Not really sure about the clamps, but I didn't want to use magnets at the back um, because I'm machining iron and you know they'd be uh, just all gummed up but but that that works well just stops them up going off the back progress so this is where we are at the moment we've got this machine to size and it came out of a blank like that um, much bigger than was required that way, but I got a deal on three pieces of the same size uh, at a significant discount, so um, it was worth it. It could uh, give the mill a good run as well. I hate machining cast iron, it goes everywhere. So now we've got to put the, the four holes in and some release so that I can get the spanner in. Um, that's the next job. One of the issues with machining cast iron is the chips go everywhere. Um, the chips guards work really well but it bounces. Um, a bigger issue is the dust and uh, you really need to be wearing a mask. One of the things that I found very useful is um, put some a couple of magnets uh, near the head or anywhere near the machine in a little plastic bag and you'd be amazed at how much airborne um, cast iron dust uh, is attracted to those magnets and that's that's dust that um, would otherwise be floating around and settling on stuff that you don't want it to settle on in case you're wondering uh, this is the puppy I use to do most of the machining on that 50 mil. Um, I didn't push it. I could take a um, millimeter cut quite happily um, if I took it easy. Millimeter is probably um, the limit, though. Um, it was it was happier at 0.6 of a mil. Machining the fixings holes. Um, the radius there just happens to be a handy um, 25, so I'm using a, a 50 mil shell mill. Um, it's coming out okay. I, I've roughed it out with a an end mill first, because this thing just throws chips everywhere. So I'm just using that to, to finish it down and, and, and come out. So these are two are done, just got to whiz it round and do the other two. Now, unfortunately we skipped ahead a bit because I lost some video, uh, apologies for that. Um, but what we did was, first of all we use a 50mm shell mill to take these corners out. Um, then I chain drilled some holes around there to make life easier to, to cut that out. I only went halfway through leaving that. And did the same for the bottom half. 
and this making this little spigot up and that held everything on the rotary table in the, in the right position and last of all just cut that out and finish that off um, next put a four mil round over on these edges and now we're just doing these bits which presents some interesting challenges um, because uh, the centre is two millimetre in from there and so so first things first we need to centre the rotary table and it is actually centred now that is spooky because I haven't touched it. Not... There you go. Yeah, no, that's um, that's pretty good. That's actually really weird because I've just moved it roughly in position and it's just in the centre. Ah, sometimes you get lucky. So we had to get a bit creative to get the right position to do the radiuses on this. So having centered the rotary table, I've made up this disc exactly the same diameter, 50 mil. And then with that in position, I can push this up and clamp that. Then I have to take that out, put the cutter in, move the table to the appropriate place bit of a faff but it um but it works so that's all the, the rounding over done um i'm gonna hand settle these edges uh round these uh, just so there's no sharp edges and it looks nice and then we'll polish it. And I think that's a job done. So this was our starting point, 150 mil by 22 mil bit of bar. And out of that, we've got that. which is really quite satisfying. Just waiting for the bolts I've made the T-nuts up and then we can um, get it fitted. So this piece replaces that. Much thicker, much beefier. That's fine. But I realised that this is located with a little spigot, which actually looks like it's cast. None of that looks like it's machined. But it would actually be quite useful, since I've got slots, that this could be positioned anywhere along the top slide, the cross slide. So I think what I'm going to do next is make a new one of these. Um, but to start with, I'm going to flush that off and just make a pin so that I can take the pin out and this can be moved anywhere along there, which will give a little bit more flexibility. Well, remember me saying I was going to flush that off and make a peg and put it into there so that I could take it out and slide it along. Mm. That's fine in theory, but to do that, I need to put it in the chuck. And of course, without this, I have no top slide. Dull. Anyways, it's clear from the marks on here 
and on here I've just stone that that this is not flat it's only touching at the edge I've I've stoned this and made it flatter but it's still really not flat at all so I think I will make another one of those all this work here is all about transferring energy and vibration from the tool through to the bed. The weakest point is always going to be the, 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 the cross slide, um, the top slide, sorry. Um, but having good contact here is important to transfer that energy down into the, the mass here. And without, with only a couple of mil around the edge, that's not going to, that's not going to work for me. So I think that'll be it to, for now. And we'll, so we'll have to get some material and make one of these up and make it properly flat so that I get really good contact. And that, so we'll transfer all that energy back into that mass. So finally, that's the uh, puppy installed. Um, so replacing that, which I didn't like because it was really quite thin there and only had two fixings. Um, it's solid enough. I was a bit concerned that this was gonna bottom out because I had to clean up the ring, but um, it is still clamping on the ring. But I will have to make a new ring when I get some material, because it's, it's not flat and it's, it could be better, but that'll do for now. It's better than it was.